Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're taking a look at another Generation Select Transformer that just arrived in the mail the other day. This is Bug Bite. And this is the first one that I've ever bought from Hasbro Direct on their Hasbro Pulse website. So yay me. Now, I know a lot of my friends that were on some of the chats I was on with at the time this figure was previewed for release weren't all that impressed with him. But he does have an interesting history and part of that is what we're going to cover here. Now, of course, Bug Bite here is simply a repaint of the Earthrise version of Cliff Jumper. Of course, right now I've got Cliff Jumper holding his shield, whereas Bug Bite just has it on his backside. But, of course, that's not uncommon. Hasbro also repainted Cliff Jumper to be Hubcap who's also available on their Hasbro Pulse site. But as you can see by their heads, they at least did retool the head to make it a different character. So that's at least a nice touch. However, with the head being stylized like Bumblebee's head, it's a surprise we did not get an Earthrise Bumblebee. So, very, very strange. Now, for the benefit of those who probably don't know much about this character, we're going to discuss it for you now. Bug Bite was originally the name of a GoBot character. This one right here. This Bug Bite was released back in 1984 as part of the Super GoBots line. Which pretty much meant he was a deluxe vehicle. He stood about two times taller than a regular GoBot. And thus that meant he was a, a little more expensive on the shelves. He would have probably went for about the same price as an Autobot car or a Decepticon jet that was being sold at the same time. The big thing about the Super GoBots was that many of them did have some die-cast metal parts, as Bug Bite has on his chest, and many of his internal components that allow the conversion to happen are made of metal. Unlike many of his Transformer counterparts, which were predominantly still using plastic. When the GoBots line failed after 1986, Hasbro eventually bought Tonka, the releaser of the GoBots, in 1989, or sometime thereafter, and thus they gained the rights to use the names for the GoBot characters, but they could not use the designs due to the fact the designs were owned by Japanese company Bandai for their Machine Robo line which was what Tonka bought to be the GoBots. Then later in 2001, I believe it was, Japanese toy distributor eHobby was deciding to release a special commemorative pack of repainted mini vehicles from the Transformers line, and they were going to name all of them after various GoBots as many of the alternate modes of those mini-vehicles did have a corresponding GoBot form. In that case, they were repainting Bumblebee to be Bug Bite, and he would be a white Volkswagen Beetle, as Bug Bite here does transform into a yellow Volkswagen Beetle. However, that idea eventually fell apart as the fandom on both sides of the aisle found the idea to be blasphemous. That's actually one of the few times the GoBot fans and the Transformer fans have had a same opinion about something. 
The Transformer fans did not like the idea of GoBots being involved in their franchise. The GoBot fans were upset over the fact that these very simplified characters were going to replace the more complicated, and in some cases bigger, GoBot toys. As there was at least one other in that setup that was also a Super GoBot. Any of them that weren't were smaller, regular GoBots, but they had more intricate conversion processes than what the mini vehicles offered. E-Hobby wisely released the set without naming the characters. And thus now we come to Bug Bite here. There was a crossover comic done many years ago that showed Bug Bite crossing over from the GoBot universe into the Transformer universe. And this was apparently the design he took to infiltrate their Decepticon ranks. Now that we've had enough of the history lesson, let's take a look here at Bug Bite. As we said earlier, he is basically a repaint and a slight retool of Cliff Jumper. So he'll have the same articulation style as Cliff Jumper. In the fact that we can turn his head from side to side. And it will rock up and down a bit. It's on a very small ball joint. The arm can be raised out to the side about so far. And it does rotate all the way around at the shoulder. He does have a hinge at his elbow, so he can bend his elbow 90 degrees. Well, he actually is double hinged at his elbows, so he can actually bend it all the way backwards, too. There is a slight swivel at the bicep. There we go. So it does allow you to move the arm just a little bit at the bicep. So he has the G.I. Joe battle grip. You can twist him at his hips. He can spread his legs apart into a full splits. You can raise his leg at the hip 90 degrees, and he can also bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees. So he does have a wide range of articulation. Now, before we transform him, let's take a look at Bug Bite's loose parts. We'll start here with his gun. His gun is exactly the same style as Cliff Jumper's, except that Bug Bite's is all purple instead of having any gray like Cliff Jumper's. Plus, the rear piece here has no paint applications. Let's borrow cliff jumpers here so you can see an adequate comparison of the two guns. And this piece is backwards. But basically it's also to show that while the back piece has silver accents like it, well that would match the gun on cliff jumper. Bug Bites has purple accents. And, of course, the gun does break apart into its component pieces, just like it does on Cliff Jumper. you got the rear piece here. You've got the bipod slash ammunition magazines. And then, of course, you have two cannons. One has a post at the end of it, the other one has two holes. That allows you to break the gun up, if you would like, into two different weapons, or keep it combined as one solid weapon. Of course, also lastly, for Bug Bite's accessories, is his rear backpack. Now it's his backpack, and also the rear portion of the car 
It also allows it to be held by any of the posts, really. It's easier to use the solid posts than the movable one. And it can fit in his hand as a shield. If you are so inclined to do so. Okay, to transform Bug Bite, it's actually the exact same way as you would do Earthrise Cliff Jumper. We'll pop the chest plate open and fold it down. You'll fold up the hood of the car from underneath to cover his head. And then fold the chest inward. Again. You'll bend his arms at the elbow backwards. Then rotate them at the shoulder so the fists are pointing straight up. Then we'll pop down these side panels here at his arms. Twist him around at the hips. And we come down here to his feet for a moment. I'm going to open the backs of his feet. Fold down the wheels. And we'll fold down the, uh, the car itself. Fold down his feet, and then you can fold the wheels to the side. Rotate the body inwards. Just try to keep the upper torso in it. Shift the back, shift the arm panels towards the back of the vehicle. And line everything up so that the hood of the car connects. Lock in the doors at the sides so that everything is fastened together nice and smooth. There we go. And then fold up the black post on the backpack unit and mount it onto the back of the car. And then, there you have it. Bug Bite is in his new Earthbound car mode. Which, of course, is the exact same kind of car that Cliff Jumper has been made into. But, of course, if you want for comparison's sake, there he is, right next to Bug Bite. And as you can see, he's almost the same size as what Bug Bite is. I almost feel kind of ripped off on that. To be honest with you folks. And of course, like with the on Cliff Jumper, you can mount the gun onto the top. But you can also turn him into the Ski Mobile. By, of course, attaching the bottom piece and putting in the ammunition clips. <laughs> All right, now I know the cannons go onto the side here. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, and the guns connect onto these posts down here at the bottom of the car. Or at least they're supposed to, but seeing as they're going the one way... Ah, it's the pieces on the back. We connect to the cylinder on the back side. That's how it works. Get this back in position. 
You know, bug bite only allows the one, so that's how we're going to handle it. Either way, that mode still looks pretty dumb. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of bug bite? Well, I do think that he is an interesting piece of Transformer and Gobot history. And it is kind of nice to see him included in the line. But I also know deep down this guy is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody's going to be interested in having him. There's probably going to be a lot of people who don't care about this video. But he is an official toy and I am trying to review as many of the official toys as one can do. Especially on my budget. But I do kind of like the toy. It isn't bad. It has all the great things and flaws about Cliff Jumper. So there's really not much to argue with it. It is a pretty good figure, but again, it is going to have many of us wondering why we didn't get a version of Bumblebee released in the Earthrise line if they could easily do the head like that. Who knows, maybe when Kingdom comes out we may finally get a version of Bumblebee that we've been waiting on. Unfortunately, he won't look like a Volkswagen Beetle, but maybe he'll look less like a Chevy Camaro. And at any rate, that's my review of the Generation Selects Bug Bite. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, I ask you to leave me a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you can join our ranks. Make sure you ring the bell so I'll be know so that you'll get notified when we post new content. Which this month could be any day now. I also ask that you share this video with your friends and fellow collectors. That's what helps this channel grow. And share your thoughts about Bug Bite in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.